Hi there, welcome to Ben's Astrophotography. If you remember, last time I talked about some tracking issue with my CEM40EC under heavy payload. I reported this issue to iOptron, they took it very seriously. In four weeks, they sent me three beta versions of firmware upgrade, and uh, the second one fixed it. So before another new moon, I started imaging again. Let me introduce my setup first. My OTA is a Taki Epsilon 180ED, it's a Newtonian, and it weighs 22 pounds without the ring or dovetails. I upgraded the stock focuser with a Moonlight motorized focuser, which adds 3 quarters of a pound. This pair of 232mm tube holders are from Vixen. They weigh and cost only half of their tacky counterparts. And I bought this pair of dovetail bars from a Chinese manufacturer, 2047 Astro Studio. They are made with aerospace aluminum alloys, light and sturdy. And uh, there's the adapter rings, my filter wheel, and my camera. The guide scope is from ZWO. It's a 40mm F7 refractor. Together with the focuser, they make the OTA heavier in the front. So I attached my USB hub, focus controller, dew heater, and cables in the back to even out a little bit. Of course, I weighed the whole thing. The payload in total is 14.6 kg or 32 pounds. That's a bit over 80% of the stated payload of this mount. Also, this 32 pounds is totally a different story from a 5 inch or 6 inch refractor because my center of payload is much farther away from the mount. My OTA is close to 10 inches in diameter and the focuser and cameras are pointing away from the mount too. Remember, this mount itself weighs only 16 pounds and it's handling 32 pounds of payload and 40 pounds of counterweight. All in all, this is a very challenging situation for this CM40 mount. Let's take a look on how it goes in action. This time I'll start with something closer to the celestial equator, which means the target's linear movement is faster than those higher in declination. As you probably figured out already, this is M16, the Eagle Nebula, and uh, I'm magnifying its center, the same area of the most famous official image by Hubble Space Telescope. Here, I just finished my first unguided sub. I have it at 150%. We have round stars. Perfect. And uh, in the image history chart, I can tell the HFR is almost as good as last time. Oh, by the way, I'm taking the subs at gain zero. The exposure is one minute. I'm just amazed by how much detail it shows in just one sub from my backyard. I guess that shows the power of a f2.8 life bucket like Epsilon 180. I fast forward a little bit. I took 8 unguided subs in a row in around 10 minutes, and all of them have round stars. My second target is NGC 7000, which is very close to the zenith when the unguided subs get some elongation. Indeed, zenith is not an easy position for tracking. So I turn on the guiding. The guiding signal is triggered quite frequently. On RA side, it always correcting to the east. But the overall RMS 0 0.7 to 0.8 arcsec is not bad. The sub looks great too. Stars are round for 2 minute subs and uh, the HFR drops down quite a lot from the unguided subs which means the radius of the stars are smaller. Again, I'll fast forward. I took six two-minute subs in a row 
and they have stable HFR and pinpoint round stars. I'm super happy it finally worked out after several weeks testing and improving. Let's wrap up. I think I can safely say that my CEM40EC is performing well under a payload of 32 pounds. That's something because not every mount on the market can really live up to 80% of their payload tag for astrophotography use. It can steadily deliver unguided subs for one minute exposure and uh, when pointing around the zenith, guiding is necessary and the RMS is around one arc sec. For over 90% of the time, stars are round in two and three minute subs. That's it for today. Hope you like it and uh, thanks for watching. See you next time.